Hey everybody, it's Justin Joy and I'm here to really share something really personal with you. A lot of people may or may not know that I uh, suffered from fibroids. And fibroids ran in my family. My mother had fibroids, my father's sister had fibroids. Ultimately, I got fibroids and when I got them, I didn't know what to do with them. Uh, I was rushed to the emergency room, this was years ago, uh, suffering from an ovarian cyst. And once I was diagnosed with the ovarian cyst, the doctor went, oh, by the way, you got fibroids, not it. Fibroids? I had no idea what fibroids were, but what I did know was that I was beginning to have heavy periods. I also struggled with some abdominal tenderness, um, abdominal pain. Uh, when I would go to get checkups, my blood levels were weak. I suffered from anemia. And I remember my gynecologist telling me, she said, because of your fibroids, there's probably a, co a contribution to why you're suffering with anemia. And so I didn't get any of those things. Thankfully, she was able to recommend a doctor for, to me um, so that I could get a second opinion about my fibroids and what was going on with my body. And so I am really excited to not only have the leading expert as it relates to fibroids, but he was also the doctor that performed my fibroid procedure. I am with Dr. Lip of the Atlanta Fibroid Center today. And we're gonna be talking about fibroids, talking about fibroid symptoms, life after fibroids, all of that good stuff, we're gonna get into it. So I am happy, Dr. Lippman, that you are here to talk us through everything fibroids. It's great to be here. Yes, Thanks for having yes, me. Yes, absolutely. So the first question that everybody goes through are, what are fibroids? How did I get fibroids? Mm -hmm. And what are these symptoms that I'm going through? Well, fibroids are the most common pelvic tumor seen in women. Okay. One of every three women have these benign tumors and up to 80% of African-American women have fibroids. So it's extremely common. Mm -hmm. um, and you describe some of the main symptoms yeah. that women often get with these benign tumors. It's the most common reason why women have heavy periods. Mm -hmm. you, you described, you talked about the heavy bleeding. It causes pelvic pain and pressure, bloating, clothes fit tight. Mm. It can press on the bladder to cause urinary frequency and waking up women at night. It can cause painful intercourse. A um, number of symptoms, but the bleeding, pain, and urinary frequency, those are the big three. Here's why I'm smiling, because if I was taking a Scantron test, I would circle D, because I suffered from every single one yep. of those symptoms. Something else that you said that I think is really important is that you use the word benign. Yes. And so I want us to, to, to tell women about the difference between benign and a malignant tumor yes. and, what, and how that associates with fibroids. And it's so important. That's an important distinction. Fibroids are benign tumors, meaning they're not cancer. Yeah. And yet, it's the most common reason why hysterectomy is performed in this country. Mm -hmm. So that is a disconnect. We shouldn't be doing such extreme measures. Hysterectomy mm -hmm. is the complete removal of the uterus from a woman for benign disease. But yet, we've been doing that forever. Um, it's the second most, hysterectomy is the second most common surgery done in the United States. And that's surprising because half the population doesn't even have a uterus. Oh, wow. So it's the second most common surgery done, yet half the population isn't even eligible. And I think, and I don't mean to interrupt, I think you make a really good point about hysterectomy and that being uh, the go-to right. for most women that are suffering with fibroids. And as you mentioned, they're benign. Right. So they're non-cancerous, right. but we seem to be making a very permanent, uh, going through permanent procedures and surgeries as it relates to having fibroids. The very interesting thing about what you do with the UFE procedure is that it's non-surgical. Correct, completely without any surgery whatsoever. So UFE stands for uterine fibroid embolization. Okay. Or some people call it uterine artery embolization. Okay. It's the same procedure, uh, UFE or UAE, same mm -hmm. thing. Um, completely outpatient, non-surgical. Um, it takes me 30 to 40 minutes to perform. They have a short recovery in our center for several hours. And then they go home the same day not only with their uterus, with just a Band-Aid. 
And here's another really interesting thing uh, when Dr. Lippman performed my procedure is that that was why I chose him. Because in doing my research, I was glad to find out that I wouldn't have to be down for six to eight weeks with a hysterectomy. In coming to you, Dr. Lippman, I was able to only be down for a week. Uh, I took an extra like three days because I kind of wanted to relax. But Dr. Lippman was able to assure me that I wouldn't be down for longer than a week and a half. And I was able to walk out of your office with just a tiny incision and a Band-Aid. Right. So it didn't take me very long. Conversely though, hysterectomies for women, and I don't think they, they realize this a lot, is that you're down for much longer and you're losing a vital organ in your body. Absolutely, that's the, that's the real important message is, one, we don't have to take out uteruses for benign disease. Yeah. Second, the uterus has a lot of important functions for women besides bearing them children. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you'll hear, well, if she's done having her kids, she doesn't need her uterus yeah. anymore, just take it out. Yeah. No, there are a lot of important functions. It's important for a woman psychologically. It's important, a number of women struggle psychologically like a man being castrated ah, after hysterectomy. Makes sense. Sexually, there's a lot of sexual dysfunction and it's embarrassing, people don't like to talk yep. about it, but they're changed sexually. There's a lot of bone loss, mm. there's urinary leaking. You take this big fibroid filled uterus out of the pelvis and it weakens the pelvic floor. Now they're leaking urine. And these wow. are young women. Remember the average age is 39 wow. for hysterectomy in this country. And we've seen, unfortunately, far too many women in their 20s have already had a hysterectomy. So while it's tragic for any woman, in my opinion, yeah. to go undergo hysterectomy for fibroids, it's particularly tragic when we hear about these very young women. Yeah, so we're here to let you know that hysterectomy does not have to be an option for you. Dr. Littman is here from the Atlanta Fibroid Center and we're talking about UFE. And so as it relates to UFE, tell everybody what that means. When they hear UFE, uh, uterine fibroid immunization, what exactly is that process? What's happening there? What we wanna do is we wanna get access into each of the uterine arteries separately and deliver these tiny particles that are sized specifically for the fibroid blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So we can put this little tiny catheter, it's the size of a piece of spaghetti, and we can negotiate it one at a time into each uterine artery separately. Um, there, the uterine artery branches like a tree, getting smaller and smaller branches. The fibroids are the leaves of the tree. I know what size those tiny branches are. And as I said, I can flow direct these particles to block those tiny vessels. Without a blood supply, the fibroids will soften and shrink. And as that happens, the woman's symptoms go away. So she gets the relief of symptoms. She goes home the same day with a Band-Aid, avoids the risks and long recovery of an operation. And importantly, she gets to keep her uterus, not lose it. So here's something else that's really important. And I know it was really important for me because when I had my procedure, I was in my late 30s, but I was single and I never had any children. And so I know a lot of women come to you yes. and they talk about fertility yes. and their ability to be able to st still bear children. And so tell everybody, will they be able to still have a child with the UFE procedure? Yes. The simple answer is yes. It's a longer discussion because yeah. that takes more discussion. Yeah. But the simple answer is yes. We've seen a number of women have children after UFE. Mm -hmm. I've had three sets of twins born oh, after wow. that. Oh, <laughs> wow. And the births are typically full term and vaginal versus if you have the surgical myomectomy, which is cutting out some of the fibroids surgically and then sewing the uterus back together. Those, that's another issue with those patients, if they get pregnant, have a child, they must have more surgery, mm -hmm. a C-section. Mm -hmm. You can't have a vaginal birth with a myomectomy. Our patients typically have vaginal births all the time. So there are large differences between the surgical and the non-surgical UFE. One of the other problems with myomectomy, as I mentioned, you can't get them all out surgically. Mm. We treat with UFE, we knock out all the fibroids. Okay. So it's typically a one and done. With myomectomy, they can't surgically cut them all out because if they try to, they might end up with a hysterectomy and that happens ah. sometimes. So they try to get the bigger ones out, okay. but they know they're leaving behind smaller ones and those smaller mm. ones grow. And within three, four, five years, they're back. They're not back. It's ones they didn't take they out didn't originally. Take out. Yeah. They've grown and now the, all the problems are back. And so now they need another procedure, hopefully not another myomectomy or a hysterectomy. Hopefully then all of those patients should get UFE, but Unfortunately, if you don't know about it, you might get another surgery. 
So let me ask you this. We've heard, I've heard several terms and I know, and especially in doing my research, I had heard so many different things. I had heard hysterectomy. You just mentioned myomectomy and then UFE. Quickly give a distinction mm -hmm. of the three because okay. people are always concerned about which option would be best for me. Right. Well, hysterectomy, the most extreme, is taking out the uterus. Now, okay. you can get a, quote, partial hysterectomy, mm -hmm. just the uterus, leave the ovaries. Um, it's nothing partial. It's a complete loss of your yeah. uterus, but that's what they call it because they leave the ovaries. Okay. There's a complete hysterectomy, uterus and ovaries, everything coming out. Okay. Then myomectomy, cutting out some of the fibroids and sewing the uterus back together. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are surgical. Myomectomy, hysterectomy, those are surgical options. UFE, UAE is non-surgical, outpatient, no surgery at all, treating all of the fibroids, every last one of them, doing it so as an outpatient with a brief recovery, keeping all your parts. So here's what I want to know. How do we get to more and better awareness? You talked about African-American women being uh, at a higher percentage to have it. But there has to be more education and more yes. information about women's options and what they can do and, and how to listen to their body if they're going yes. through these things. So Dr. Littman, tell women more, more information, what they can do to get it. Well, the most important thing is to make sure if you're suffering with fibroids, to get a second opinion. If you're just hearing just the surgical options, you got to get a second opinion with an experienced interventional radiologist. That's the type of physician I am. You need to get a second opinion from an experienced interventional radiologist that treats fibroids so that you can hear the full spectrum of options. Now, some gynecologists will mention all the options, mm -hmm. but the majority won't. They're surgeons and they will just give you the surgical answer. You need all the answers to make the best, most informed decision. Mm -hmm. So get that second opinion. That's really important. So let me let me so let's talk about life after a UFE. What will women experience? What will they no longer suffer from? And what's really a good timeline? Because we mm -hmm. know we hear about hysterectomies and that they're permanent, but you really broke down a lot of information about once this organ is removed from a hysterectomy, there's so many other things that yes. are happening with a woman's body that we don't even know is going to happen once that's removed. So with UFE, what is like, what is it like life after? It's usually transformational. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of hugging ah. uh, after we see patients come back three months after the procedure. Everyone comes back. Yeah. We go right down the list of the symptoms. How's the bleeding doing? How's the pain? How's the urinary frequency? And usually patients say, I'm a new woman. I'm transformed. Mm -hmm. I've got my life back. I'm no longer anemic. I've got energy I haven't mm. seen in a long time. I bleed now like I'm a teenager again. <laughs> Light, regular periods. I can't believe it. Yeah. So they're so happy. They're transformed. They get their life back. They don't have to worry about everything revolving around their menstrual. That's true. They get the quality of life they're seeking back. So they're very appreciative of that. And so that's great. I mean, that's by the three-month follow-up. Now, they'll see those changes progressively over weeks to the three-month visit. Mm -hmm. They'll see it before I see them. But if, if you can tell you're better at that three-month visit and you see on the imaging, we get a follow-up MRI, if you see that all the fibroids are dead, likely I'll never see them you again. see them again. And that's good to know because when I came to you, Doc, and you shocked me when you told me this, right? And I don't even know if you remember telling me this, but when, after you did my exam and I did my MRI, you told me that I had the uterus of a six month pregnant woman. Yes, and that well, just blew me away. A lot of women have very large uteruses. These fibroids are hard and firm like rocks and that's how they cause their symptoms by pressing on things or stretching the lining. That's how they cause their symptoms and they will enlarge a woman's uterus just like a pregnant woman. Um, yours happen to be very mm -hmm, large, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of women four, five, six months pregnant, and it they can't understand what's yep. going on. They may yep. not know why this is happening. Mm -hmm. People may come up to them and say, when's the baby due? And they're kind of embarrassed when they have happened to tell to me. them. <laughs> they're not pregnant. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. fibroids. And yeah. that's what happened to Cynthia yep. Bailey. Yep. That's and she, right. she went through the same thing. You know, these paparazzis were going to come out with the breaking story and that rumors, she's pregnant. Yeah, right. She wasn't yeah. pregnant. Yeah. It was she was fibroids. suffering with fibroids. Right. So here's something else I really think is important. A lot of people think that UFE is experimental and hasn't been around, but you've been practicing for a really long time. Yes. And as it relates to that, 
insurance. People want to know about how can they afford, you know, to, to, to pay for a procedure sure. like this. So does insurance cover UFE? Absolutely. And UFE is not considered experimental or investigational. It is yeah. a standard medical practice mm -hmm. that's well proven, safe yep. and effective. We've got almost 25 years of medical data to support. Yeah. So not only your testimonial, yep. but thousands and yeah. thousands of other women have experienced the yeah. same thing that you did. Um, and so, yes, all insurances cover it, um, including Medicare mm -hmm. and Medicaid, and we take all insurances. Um, so that is a really important, because oftentimes women hear about UFE for the first yeah. time and they wonder, is this gonna be yeah. covered? Absolutely yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was for me, I didn't pay a dime. I went through all of the pre-prep pre procedures, but in, as it relates to insurance, I paid no money. So insurance does cover it, and that's a good uh, piece of information to have. And so ladies, if this sounds like you, if it sounds like or you felt the abdominal pressure and pain, if you felt and you know about heavy periods, as Dr. Lippman mentioned, that your life evolved around your heavy periods, it no longer has to be you. You no longer have to suffer. There is an answer and it's the UFE procedure. And I highly recommend it. I highly recommend you do your research, but more importantly, Dr. Lippman from the Atlanta Fibroid Center is the leading expert in the country as it relates to this. Dr. Lippman, tell them where they can find you, phone information, website, sure. et cetera. Well, there are a number of ways people can find us. They can find us on our website, atlii.com. We have a YouTube channel, the Atlanta Fibroid Center. So if they go to Atlanta Fibroid Center on YouTube, there are over a hundred videos on fibroids, UFE, all sorts of information. Uh, we have an Instagram page, dr underscore lipman l-i-p-m-a-n so if they're more into instagram they can do that uh, facebook there are a number of ways to find me if they want to call and, and book an appointment and talk to us directly that number is 770-953-2600 and so here's the lasting uh point that i really think is really neat if you if you are a social media person uh, they have a cool hashtag it's called don't lose your you and so that also relates to yourself, but it also relates to your uterus. Right. So make sure you hashtag don't lose your you and find out more information at atlantafibroidcenter.com. We'll see you next time.